Day 324. Today there are a lot of interesting developments. After the Ukrainians pulled back to the railway embankment and assumed their new defensive positions that are detached from the city, the Russians could no longer maintain the same level of intensity of their attacks. Today the Russians launched a series of assaults in the direction of salt mines and seal station, but they got caught in the crossfire from multiple Ukrainian positions and eventually were destroyed. There are a lot of problems associated with storming these fortifications, and here is why. Last time I told you that the Ukrainians assumed their positions in the western part of Solodar, in particular in the salt mines and seal station. This way they evened out the front line and established their defense on the same line with their other positions. And when it comes to the defensive positions in the Solodar area, there are four positions that are synergistically working to protect one another. At the moment, the Russians can only launch their attacks in the directions of salt mines and seal station because Blagodatne and Krasnopolivka are not within their reach. Local geography allows the Russians to attack seal station only from the southeast because there is a small forest and a garden in this area that helps to conceal their troops during the attacks. The Ukrainians are maintaining their positions on the outskirts and in order to get to the Ukrainian side, the Russians would need to cross an open field. And what complicates the situation a lot for the Russians is that the Ukrainians in the salt mines have fire control over this segment of the ground. The only way to avoid it is to attempt to enter the seal station a bit to the north. However, if we look at the topographic map, we can see that the Russians would emerge from behind the hill and expose themselves to the fire from Krasnopolivka. This significantly complicates the situation for the Russians, as their attacks will always be countered from two sides, either Krasnopolivka and Seal Station or Salt Mines and Seal Station. In order to alleviate their tactical disadvantage, the Russians have established their positions on the local heights along the tree belts, two kilometers away from Krasnopolivka. This way they can try to fix Ukrainian troops in Krasnopolivka and keep them busy, while another group is trying to attack Seal Station from the southeast. And this is exactly what happened today. Ukrainian general staff reported that the Russians had fired at Krasnopolivka and assaulted Seal Station. However, the assault group was repelled and the Ukrainians remained in full control over this region. When it comes to the salt mines, local geography and infrastructure allowed the Russians to attack them only from the south because there is a small river and an open field to the north of it. Some sources indicate that the Russians only control this block of buildings because when they move to the outer streets to the north, for example, not only are they close to the main Ukrainian base, but they are also under fire control of the Ukrainians in Seal Station. The outer streets to the west are also under fire control of the Ukrainians. If you look at the topographic map, we can see that both Blahodatne and these positions are at the same elevation. And given that the street faces Blahodatne almost directly, the Ukrainians have almost all of it in direct vision. Similarly to what we saw in Krasnopolivka, the Russians are trying to undermine the ability of the Ukrainians to work synergistically. In order to achieve this goal, they have established their positions in the small forest on the outer part of the hill that they control. From this position, they are firing at the Ukrainians in Blahodatne in order to increase the chances of success of their attack groups in Solidar. Unfortunately for the Russians, this did not work out very well. Today the Russians attempted to attack the salt mines from the south, assuming that they would be covered, but the Russians on the hill failed to do their job and the attack group was destroyed. The reason why the Russians in this small forest were unable to maintain a constant fire is that the Ukrainians employed a counterfire from Krasnohora. The outskirts of Krasnohora are located only 600 meters from the Russians in the forest, which does not allow the Russians to move freely in the region and makes them the targets of immediate drone attacks. Overall, the Russians have only two viable directions of attacks, both of which put them at the crossfire. In order to minimize the risk, the Russians are trying to fix Ukrainian troops in the surrounding settlements, but achieving a substantial reduction in crossfire proved to be difficult. That is why some sources reported that the Russians deployed their airborne forces in the vicinity of Krasnohora in order to fix this problem. But in the meantime, 
it seems like the Ukrainians will continue to hold this defense line and repel Russian attacks. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.